Okay, Pokemon, here we go. Woo, get hyped, everybody. Look at all these brown colors in the color palette. Don't get more exciting than that. So, uh, here's something we can do. Let's have the, the first official uh, a Mongoose 1 billion uh, Train Out to Laugh compilation. Okay, ready? Here we go. Okay, that was the, the Train Out to Laugh compilation. Um, there's lots of trainers here. <clears throat> Let's see. I think only one of them's got a, a shadow uh, poke. That, that's, is that what I'm just going to call Pokemon now? Pokes? That's fucking stupid. I hate this channel. Okay, so we got Enorith and, and Lotad. And uh, Enorith's claim to fame is that it's the one of the fossil Pokemon of this generation. Every generation has him. Except the second one, I think. Anyway, yeah, the fossils are always a recurring theme. And uh, in Pokemon Sword and Shield, they tried to, to kind of innovate the fossil concept where they let you choose the combinations of fossils you could do. That's not very descriptive. Anyway, instead of having a full fossil that would turn into a Pokemon, they would give you like a series of partial fossils and you could mix and match them and get maybe like six different possible combinations of fossils depending on how you mix the pieces up. And uh, there was, because one was like the bottom half of one Pokemon while the other was like the top half of some different Pokemon. And yeah, it was really cool how you could get all the combinations, but people on the internet didn't like it because they wanted to combine the top half, you know, of one with the, the same, the original that had the bottom half. They didn't want to do it the creative mix em up way, they wanted to just have it look normal. Because people on the internet hate fun. That would be like if you if you had a set of paints and you wanted to combine them to, to get a certain color and and some chode came to you and they're all like, No, we have to keep them separate. We can't do new things or I'm gonna shit myself. I don't think I really explained this very well. Let me try this again. Okay, let, let's make, try to make this sound a bit less word salad esque. So you had Pokemon A and Pokemon B, and you had t you had the top half and the bottom half of each of them, and you, you couldn't you couldn't have the top half of A and the bottom half of A. You could either have the top half of A and the bottom half of B, or the top half of B and the bottom half of A. It it had to be a mixed up combination of sorts. You, you couldn't have two of the same set, because they wanted to make it fun. And you know how people on message boards feel about fun things, so that naturally people complained. Well, I just completely bungled trying to explain this fairly simple concept. My brain is just going all squishy. Uh, so let's go down these stairs built into the, the cave. The caveman. What I want to know is... Where's the caveman? That was a funny video. Boy, I sure am glad that he's in there and that we're out here and that we're in there and that he's out here and that he's the sheriff. And I just remembered what I want to know is where's the caveman? Needless to say, I've seen that video quite a few times. Oh dear, oh dear. So you saw coughing a second ago, and then you, you got Greeny McBall cut to go along with him. I bet you we can one-shot coughing pretty easily, like we did before. You know, psychic on poison and all that. Uh, I have a strategy guide for Pokemon Coliseum, and uh, you know it's, it's very, it's very basic in its descriptions of things. It, Every battle, it basically just tells you which type to use on what. So it'll say, use fire on the grass type, and electrical or grass on the water type. And basically every battle's like that. <clears throat> so as a kid, I had that strategy guide, but not the game that went with it. Yep, we one-shotted coughing just like I said we would. Anyway, so I tried reading through the strategy guide cover to cover, and uh, yeah, it got very repetitive. Gosh, whenever I hear the, the phrase cover to cover, it reminds me of a, 
A friend I used to have whose mom was like a control freak and she was complaining about how uh, how he read too many game informers and so and so will just read those things cover to cover and but he won't read the blah blah blah. I mean I guess it's kind of well intentioned but then at the same time you, you just gotta back off. You, you gotta let your, your kid do what they want. They gotta, they gotta fulfill their own destiny, self-determination and all that. Grow up to be their own person or some such nonsense. So that battle was uh, fairly easy. We just plowed right through them like a bulldozer te tearing down the Amazon rainforest. When I was uh, many years younger, I wrote a paper in school about the Amazon rainforest and for some reason I had a line in there about how the, the bulldozers tear down the forest at 200 miles an hour and Obviously, I didn't mean that, but since it was like a typed paper, there was really no way to tell what was what was serious and what wasn't. I mean, given the fact that this was a school essay, I think the assumption was that everything was supposed to be serious. So the teacher was kind of thinking, oh, I don't think they go that fast. And <laughs> just what a, what a silly mental image, a bulldozer t tearing down a forest at 200 miles an hour. Just... <laughs> Is smashing right through there. There's Meditate, the, the meditating monkey of yore. I assume he's supposed to be like a monkey. His head kind of reminds me of an onion. Yeah. What's what's the connection between onions and martial arts? They also had the the the, the karate onion in Parappa the Rapper, and he had that rap song about. <clears throat> learning how to do karate. I, f if, I feel like, see, we've got two different examples of onions and martial arts being connected, so surely there's some reason that people keep doing this. There must be some connection that I'm not aware of between onions and martial arts. Why would one game have an onion martial arts monkey and then another unrelated game have an onion karate master? It doesn't make any sense. Anywho, Speaking of Parappa the Rapper, did you ever see that thing? Well, probably not, but there was this thing where someone found out that one of the songs in Parappa the Rapper was plagiarized. It was uh, the song that plays on the driving minigame. It was uh, heavily inspired by a different song called Turtles Have Short Legs. It was by a, by a very stereotypical uh, Japanese guy who, who couldn't uh, pronounce the letter L very well, and he, he really played into the stereotype. It, I'm not going to attempt to recreate it verbally because that, that would upset people. You can't do that on television. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I hope my throat doesn't sound all phlegmy for the next uh, seven minutes of the episode. That wouldn't be good. Okay, so uh, we didn't paralyze meditate, but I think we can still grab him. We just gotta believe! Okay, here we go. A one, a two, a three, and uh, yep, there you go. One metal, m meditating martial arts onion monkey for us. I'm sure he'll make invaluable, er, make valuable contributions to her, her team. I like Numel's cry. <laughs> Reminds me of this thing I saw in a movie review once with <laughs> where I, I, th this guy just made a really weird noise that didn't fit into the script at all. He's, he's just like, hey, there's Barbie. And <laughs> why did he say that? That that probably wasn't written down in the script. That was in uh, Howard the Duck. What a strange movie. Well, I mean, I've, I've never seen it, but I, I've seen reviews and... I have a, a high-level overview of how the movie works, and it seems very mean-spirited, if I do say so myself. I think that was a George Lucas one, wasn't it? Good old George Lucas. As hello, I am George Lucas. I am the creator of Star Wars. I weigh 400 pounds, and I have an Ewok costume that I wear when I take my specially made Star Wars car to the drive through the other day, the people at the drive-thru gave me the wrong thing, and I started sobbing uncontrollably. <clears throat> yeah, George Lucas probably said all that stuff at some point. 
I don't know, I'm just I'm just spitballing. Uh, so there's a uh, Wishmer and Lotad again. Gee, Lotad seems to be a popular choice for NPCs in this cave, huh? <clears throat> well, come to think of it, <coughs> frack me. Come to think of it, um, Mira B, who's at the end of this cave, is gonna have Lotad's evolved form like six times in a row. So I guess perhaps there's a correlation there. But that's not important right now. We'll save that more in depth for when we get to Miru B. So anywho, I've been thinking, can you imagine how bizarre Pokemon must have looked just conceptually to, to our parents back in the day, how this was would have been just unlike anything else they had ever seen as they grew up in like the the seventies and not only were video games not not a concept back then, but even not further than that, the idea of this multimedia franchise about these colorful creatures that you can capture that have magical powers that can be used in battle against other magical creatures. I think they would just be so completely foreign compared to everything else that they grew up with. I mean, we're talking about people who grew up on like the Andy Griffith show and I think the phrase like low tad used water gun would just be so completely lost on them. It's no wonder our parents hate us so much that they just look at all of our preference in media and think, Oh, my son came out autistic and if only we could have done something. I mean, can you think of anything from back then that, uh, you know, would have been comparable to, to Pokemon, any media franchise? I mean, I guess all the all the stuff back then was more ground in reality. I guess maybe like Snorks. What was Snorks a 70s thing or, or an 80s thing? That's the closest thing I can think of is, is Snorks. And, and the fact that it was that it's Japanese probably put off our parents as well, because you know their parents were were raised to to hate the Japanese because of World War II and all that stuff and the. They, they were raised with a, a sense of almost xenophobia, I guess you could say, and the, 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 the anti-foreigner sentiment lasted long after World War II had ended, and, and so they'd be opposed to anything foreign. And I mean, in some respects, that can be a good thing when it comes to, like, buying cars. You want to buy local to support all your friends and neighbors and such, but with stuff like Pokemon, I mean, it's not like there's any real... There's nothing American made that's comparable. None that I can think of anyway. I mean, there, there were lots of Pokemon competitors over the years, but I think they were all Japanese, because there was a, there was Metabots, which was Japanese. There was a Cubix, which I'm assuming is Japanese. There was Digimon, obviously, also Japanese. Uh, fighting Fudans, that, that was Japanese, I think. Um, Yokai Watch, much, much later, that was also Japanese. Yeah, I don't think there's been an American-made uh, Pokemon clone that I can think of. I think even Sega attempted to clone Pokemon once. They had like an arcade game where you could capture realistic bugs or something like that. and That, that never quite took off. I guess none of the designs were, were quite appealing enough compared to everything you see in Pokemon. Speaking of designs, I'm kind of surprised the whole Digimon thing didn't hold off hold out a lot longer than it did because they had some really good designs in there. I think maybe if they just pushed the marketing a little harder that that could have been a much more serious competitor to Pokemon. Digimon's cool. They did kind of make a, a small comeback over the last year or so with Cyber Sleuth and uh, soon to be uh, Digimon Survive. Although that one's having development troubles. It's coming though. That'll be a fun one to play on this show once the day comes. So, that's it for this episode. We're getting kind of close to the Mirror B battle. I'd, I'd estimate maybe uh, two more episodes before we get there. So that'll be real good. We get to hear that, that funky music that plays during the Mirror B battles. Yeah, that one. So, yeah...